Welcome back everyone to the Bears Travel Plays YouTube channel. Today is Saturday, November 16th, and I'm back breaking down a college football game for the Saturday slate. Have a pretty good couple matchups today. We're going to be looking at Xavier going up against Wake Forest, and then Notre Dame going up against Georgetown. Four total plays today, two game picks, two player props. Let's take a look at the Friday night plays. Had a really bad day on Friday night. One and three day in total leaderboard, not updated. Uh, I'm going to do this on every video. Just got done watching Jake Paul and Mike Tyson fight. I decided to watch that over a lot of the... Uh, NBA, NCAA, and an NCAA football games tonight. And like I said on every video, um, it wasn't scripted. Obviously, it looked like Mike Tyson was actually trying out there. And it's just he, – you can tell that Mike Tyson's still a bad man. He, he wants to kill somebody. He wants to bite your ear off. The mind works. The mentality is there. Like him walking out, I was scared. Um, but he's 58. He's got chicken legs and his body just would not let him fight. And it's sad to see because you can tell that it's still in there for Mike Tyson. But um, first two rounds looked pretty good. After that, he got tired. Likes gave out him a little bit. But Jake Paul wins eight rounds. I mean, 58 years old going eight rounds in a boxing match. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Mike Tyson, one of the best to do it. Probably the best, unless you're a Muhammad Ali fan, and then probably Muhammad Ali's your number one. But uh, we had a one and three day tonight on college basketball. SMU plus one and a half, decent uh, at first, decent in the fourteen minute mark, decent in the twelve or ten minute mark, and then Butler offensive rebounds and making threes, offensive rebounds and making threes. That's how you win college games. This one hurt. Ohio State plus six. Uh, they had five points in the first fifteen minutes of the game, but they were only down by ten. So, uh, big old rock fight. Ohio State couldn't make a three. Texas A&M, very physical. They had something called a turkey. Uh, that's whenever – I think it's whenever – I was listening. I think it's whenever they force a turnover without a shot attempt. Yeah, I think it's when they force a turnover without a shot attempt. They had seven with, like, 18 minutes left in the second half. So, Texas A&M just dominated every every aspect of that game, defensively at least. Uh, Bruce Thornton, horrible night, um, had foul trouble early, only played 10 minutes in the first half. I think he finished with 11, had the 14.5. Uh, Boopy Miller or Kevin Miller on the uh, – nobody likes saying Kevin, though. Boopy Miller, over 13.5 points, he did hit with 17 points. So that was the one win. One and three day, will update the leaderboard, 18 and 10 now, year to date. Hurts to have a bad day like that, but it's the first bad day of the season. So we're going to bounce back in a big way here. We're going to look at Wake Forest going up against Xavier this should be a pretty good game between these two teams. I do think that Xavier is the better overall roster. I haven't been able to watch them this season, which I'm kind of worried about backing them, but they're the better overall team. The spread right now looking like minus 3.5 or minus 4.5 for Xavier. We've talked about Wake Forest already this season. They've got a really good guard, Hunter Salas. They've got a, a couple players that stuck around. They've got a couple transfers. They didn't play overly great going up against Michigan the other day, but they didn't need to play overly great to win that game, even though they were the underdog. I think it's going to be just a fine team in the ACC. They're probably going to be third overall, maybe fourth. But whenever I go look at Xavier, I see a team who can win the Big East Conference. They can compete with the Creightons of that division, with that conference. They have Zach Freeman all returning. He's one of the best big boys in the country this season. He's going to play the forward position. They have a transfer named Ryan Conwell. He's from Indiana State. Indiana State should be a pretty familiar team for all you guys because they made that push for the tournament last season. He scored 16 points per game last year for Indiana State. Then they have a bunch of players that Xavier had last season. They stuck on the bench last season, but they've got like Davey McKnight. He scored 14 points per game this year so far. I just think overall they're the better team in this matchup. They've got good card play. They've got a big boy down low who can do some damage. I do think Xavier can be one of the better teams in the Big East, if not the best team, fighting with Creighton. Creighton, not what they used to be. Uh, Creighton two or three years ago, whoa. Creighton now, not so much, whoa. I'm going to grab Xavier in this game. Against the spread as a play, probably minus 4.5. And for the next play, we are going to be looking at Notre Dame or Notre Dame. Going up against Georgetown, Notre Dame, not really known for a basketball squad, I don't think, but they've got a couple of really good players this season. Most likely going to be pretty good this year. Looking at the matchup predictor, it does say that Notre Dame is the favorite, which is kind of shocking because, again, I've had a lot of these Kind of like the SMU game, which is why I'm not as confident, which I, that's why I hate having those one in three days because I'm not as confident coming back. But you got to stick to your roots. You got to stick to your gut. I think Georgetown's a better team. I think the books got it wrong here. I'm going to take Georgetown to win this game outright. If they're going to offer us points, I'll take the points. But I think Georgetown wins this game. They are known to be a basketball school. Georgetown, they bleed basketball. I have not seen 
either of these school play this season. But looking at Notre Dame, they've got the same players from last year. Three players scoring 18 points per game. Brandon Shrewberry, a freshman last season, stuck around for Notre Dame, scoring 10 points per game last season. You should all know the name Marcus Burton, one of the best freshmen last year for Notre Dame, scored 17 points per game. He's going to be a problem again this season. Then a new guy. He played for Notre Dame last season, wasn't very effective, but Tay Davis going for 18 points per game to start the season. The Fighting Irish only scored nine points per game last season for him. Tay Davis did. I don't want to sound like I know exactly what I'm talking about with this Notre Dame team, but it looks like they brought back the same team with basically no transfer, and they've just been playing some bad competition to make the numbers look good. So that's just my opinion. I don't see a lot of transfers. I just see this exact same Notre Dame team from last season. I'm sure those freshmen got a little bit better, but they've just been playing bad competition, so the numbers are up. For Georgetown, on the other side, they have a true freshman. I'm going to talk about him as my player prop, Thomas Sober. Whoa, this kid looks unstoppable. 22.5 points per game in the first two games. They returned their best player from last season as well, Jaden Epps. Scored 18.5 points per game last year, and then this is where I think Georgetown separates himself from Notre Dame. Micah Peavy. He's a transfer from TCU. Not a huge get, but he had 14 points per game so far for Georgetown. I think he can be really good for Georgetown. They also have a guy out of the Ivy League, Malik Mack. That was one of the best Ivy League players last season, scoring 17.2 points per game. So Georgetown, they brought in a lot of key players. They brought in two guys who are averaging 14-plus points per game. That's 30-plus points per game they're getting for Georgetown. They bring back their best player. They have a true freshman scoring 20-plus points per game. Georgetown's the play here. I think they cover the number, whatever it is. I'm going to take them money line as the play if we don't get any numbers. Uh, let's go over to the best player prop of the day. We're going to be looking at Xavier going up against Wake Forest as a first play. Give me Zach Freeman to go over his total points. Super senior for Xavier. He's been with Xavier since 2019. This is going to be his fifth season with the team. He's gotten better each year. Last season, the average was 15.2 points per game. He shot a 58% from the field, which was a career high for him. This season, he started off with 19 points per game, 64% from the field, only needed nine shots per game so far to average nearly 20 points per game. He has played in three games, scoring 17-plus points in all three of those games, shooting over 55% from the field in all those games as well. In his last game, he also showed off the three-point shot. He made four of his five attempts from the outside. He is most likely going to draw matchups going up against Tavion Spiller, and that's a matchup he's going to win very easily. He's got a couple inches on Spiller. They might throw in Eaton Reed. He's a slow-moving big boy, seven-foot-one, I just think Zach's got enough finesse to get around him. So I don't think that's a guy who can beat Zach either. Zach's good at the mid-range. He's good in the post. He's a guy who can step out and hit threes, hitting four threes in the last game. You have to double him. You have to. And if you double-team him, there is just too many guys on this Xavier team now who can score. So I think he is going to be the best bet in this game. I'm going to take his over total points as the first play of the day. And for the last player prop, for Saturday. We're going to be looking at Georgetown going up against Notre Dame. We're going to take the true freshman, Thomas Sauber. This kid looks like he's 18 years old. He actually might be 18 years old. He's built like a tree. Look at the base. Look at the height of the top of this guy. It looks like they took two stumps and glued them side by side for his legs, and then the walnut tree grew in the branches of the top of his body. This guy is built for the post, and yeah, he's a true freshman. He's going to take some time to make to make the most of his time here at Georgetown, but he's a dominant force already going up against these smaller schools. 22.5 points per game, 11 rebounds. He shot 55% from the field in the first three games. He was very good going up against Fairfield in his last game. First game, maybe some jitters. He only scored 13 points, or he shot 5 of 13 from the field, 20 points scored, but that 5 of 13 needs to be a lot better. It was a lot better in the last game. He had 25 points. He did take a couple three-point shots, made one of them, 11 of 16 from the field, this is a guy who can draw contact as well. Free throws, 12 of 15 on the season in the first two games. You guys know I love a man who gets to the free throw line and gives us some free points. That's a big positive in my mind. I think he's going to have himself a day going up against Notre Dame. Remember, 6'10", 265 pounds, looks like a tree. That's two points every time he touches the ball in the paint. Give me the over total points as the final play of the day. Let's go to the recap graphic. We're going to take Xavier against the spread. Again, 3.5, maybe 4.5 is the play there. Georgetown against the spread. It's currently not out still. It does say Notre Dame is projected to win the game. So Georgetown with the points. If it's like one, give me Georgetown money line. Uh, Zach Freeman all over his total points going up against Wake. And then Thomas Sober over his total points going up against Notre Dame as the final play of the day. Guys, going to do everything. It's basketball picks and props for Saturday, November 16th, slated games. So you guys enjoy the content. Please sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video, and thanks for watching.